Welcome to Click Through Tips and Tricks. My name is Josh Good. I'm a Solutions Architect here at ClickTech. In this video, we're going to look at dynamically adjusting expressions. So let's say we created a click view, looks something like this, and we've looked at sales across uh, various dimensions, uh, and we look at maybe perhaps sales across time, countries, um, category names, things like that. And then we have a uh, KPI there at the top showing us our total sales for whatever selection we make. So we select 2013, there's our sales for 2013. Uh, after looking at that, we say, well, that's a pretty good layout, um, but maybe I also want to look at, uh, at cost of goods. So we can add that KPI at the top and maybe fill in more KPIs across the top. Uh, but then the lower, uh, the lower visualizations, we might also want to have those reflect cost of goods as well. So how can we go about making that a little bit more dynamic? Well, one of the easiest ways to do that is we can just add in a new expression, and we would just sum COS for cost of goods, and we'll call that cost of goods. I click OK, and I can add that in and compare the two. Maybe I don't want to have them both compared, uh, but I want to have it change out dynamically so I can group those together, and that gives me a cycle down here, and that changes my expression on the fly. And of course, I could do the same thing over here on this other chart. And we'll group that again. So that works well. The thing, though, is, is now I can end up with one chart showing cost of goods and the other chart showing sales. So I want to link these somehow so that they change at the same time. So we'll just remove those expressions. Uh, and we'll look at a way of doing that so we can have both charts change at the same time. So what we'll want to do basically is set up an extra list box that we're going to select on that's going to change our, our, our sales and our cost of goods. So we'll go back into our script and we're going to add in a, an additional table that's going to be a data island. So it won't be part of the data model, but it, but it will, uh, will exist in the, in the background data. So in this particular set of data, we have sales, the cost of goods, but then we also have discounts, uh, quantities, gross profits, and so forth. So we're going to create a table that does all that. So I have a little uh, thing on my clipboard, uh, and I'll just paste that in. So what this is is an inline load table. I'm naming the metric called pick metric, and that's going to be sort of the plain English name of what I want to pick. So quantity shipped is going to be quantity. Sales shipped is, is, is going to pick the sales field and so forth. So the metric here is, is the actual field inside ClickView. That's going to be what we want to sum up. And then the metric pick is just something so it's, it's a little bit easier to understand what it is and we don't see the short forms. I've also added in a percent sign in front of metric pick and metric. And that, what that's going to do is, is I'm going to use the, that as an indicator to not include in my current selections box. At the beginning of my script, I'm going to write in the following. Set and then hide prefix equal to percent sign. So what that's going to do is look at any field, and if it has the percent sign as the first uh, character in the field, it won't include it in the current selections box. So I'll reload this. With the reload complete, I can look at the data model, and you can see an extra table has been added right here, and that's that list of the pick metrics and the actual metric we're going to select. What I can do in ClickView now is if I add a new list box for the pick metric, I can now select what I want to see. And then that will uh, correspond to the actual metric itself. So now I can go into the properties of the chart and remove sales. And instead, I'm going to substitute in the metric. Now, if I just put in the word metric, it's going to pick the, uh, the, the actual field and try to sum the, the text string, which would be sales or something like that. So I need to get ClickView to evaluate that first to return the entire text string in there. So I'm going to use the dollar sign expansion to have ClickView do that. And then as for the label, I'll just use the, uh, the pick metric as the label. I 
click OK on that. The label is quantity shipped, and this is shipped sales for, for each country. And then if I go to gross profit, it's now showing me the gross profit. And when I go to quantity, it shows me the quantity amount. I can do the same thing over here on the other chart. Metric, and put that in the dollar sign expansion. And then percent pick metric, or equals percent pick metric. Click OK there. And you see now they both say discount applied, ship sales, and they're in unison. The nice thing about doing it this way is if I have a, um, a chart like this chart down here, which has two expressions in it, uh, or um, sales, and then here I'm using a little bit more advanced expression using set analysis, I, I can do the same sort of thing here. So you can see I've already put that in here as the metric, and then here I can take sales, and I can do dollar sign equals metric, like that. And now as I change my pick metric, my values change. So that works pretty well. Uh, one thing I like to do, though, is to make this a little bit more advanced and to make it a little bit nicer, is instead of having a list box like this, if I'm going to have these um, summaries or KPIs at the top, wouldn't it be nice if I could click on the sales here and click on the cost of goods here and, and actually make that select the pick metric. So we can do that. So I'll just uh, use an action to do that. Let me go into the actions. I'm going to add an action. I'm going to select in field. My select in field is going to be pick metric. And I'm going to select, uh, this is sales, so it's going to be sales shipped. Click OK on that. And you can see now, when I push on, on that, it selects it. And I can do the same thing with cost of goods. Action, select in field, pick metric, and cost of goods. Apply. And now I have that ability to change between those two. I have a bunch of other metrics I might want to apply here, and I can build those out as KPIs across the top as well. And I wouldn't need this, this list box at all. So, but when I do delete the list box, though, it doesn't really signal to me very well that I'm in sales or I'm in cost of goods or anything like that. So what we could do perhaps is we could have the background change color. So I'll go into the properties of sales, and for the color, I'm going to change the color. So to change the color, I can just click down here in background color, and I can make a calculated color. And what that will do is based on when my, what my selections that are made, I'll change the color. So I can say if the pick metric is equal to sales shipped, then make it red, otherwise make it blue, for example. And that would simply make it change based on, on, on what's selected or not. So there, when sales is selected, it's one color. Now, red and blue, not really good selections. So what color should I use? Well, it's click view, so what I would suggest is using green, white, and gray. So I have happened to know the specific colors that green, white, and gray are. So green that is used in ClickView is a 024016, and the gray is RGB uh, 219, 219, 219. We'll click OK, click OK, click OK. So now you can see it goes green and gray based on whether it's selected or not. And I'll do the same thing for cost of goods. I actually already had it set up in here, and we'll just change that to COS, cost of goods. Select on cost of goods, it turns green. Click on sales, it turns green. And I can continue to build out for all the metrics that I want. And once I've completed, I can end up with something that looks like this. So now when I select on discounts, for example, discounts turns green in the background. Everything else is gray in the background following the conventions of ClickView. And you can see that all of my charts change in unison as well. Uh, it also works by uh, select on a different customer or a specific country. Everything updates, everything's integrated, and it's all one set of data that I can navigate through however I want. What I've shown you today is one method of changing the expression on multiple charts through a single control. There is another way of doing it in ClickView that I haven't touched on, and I'll just point it out now. If I go into the properties of any expression, 
uh, in version 11, the conditional enablement was added to the uh, to the expressions, and we could use a, a list box like we did before to change out which expression actually gets used and, and move through that. I find that technique uh, to work better when you need to to have very different expressions between the expressions you're going to move between. Uh, if it's just a matter of changing a single field and you're summing everything or averaging everything, I prefer to use the method I've demonstrated today. That concludes Click Click Your Tips and Tricks. If you have any additional questions, uh, please feel free to add comments. Also, do check out ClickView Community, and remember that our expert services and partners are there to assist you with your ClickView deployment. Mm -hmm.